Shadow Squadron is one of my favorite groups seen within the Clone Wars television series. They're a group of 12 clone pilots, and for that reason, they hold a special place in my heart. So today we discuss this legendary fighter squadron known for bringing down the CIS super weapon, the Malevolence. Before we get started, quick plug, make sure to join our Discord and chat it up in the Pilot's Lounge or hang out in the Hangar Bay to recommend your favorite starfighters and starships. I hope to chat it up with my fellow Star Wars nerds. Link is in the description of this video. Now, back to the video at hand. Who are the pilots of Shadow Squadron? Starting with one of my favorites, Matchstick. Cocky and eager to bring the fight to General Grievous, Matchstick would unfortunately not be joining his wingman broadside for drinks at the bar like he promised. During a desperate maneuver to save time by using an old smuggler's route known as the Balmora Run, Matchstick would graze a giant Nibre Manta and damage his left stabilizer. The stabilizer would then go out during a high speed maneuver to evade the Mega Ion Cannon's spread and cause him to spin out of control colliding with Tag. Both Y-Wings would explode, killing their pilots and gunners, prior to Shadow Squadron even engaging the Malevolence. As mentioned before, Broadside and Matchstick were good friends, and although Matchstick wasn't there to fly Wingman to Broadside, Broadside would go on to serve within Shadow Squadron throughout the war and its conclusion. CT-4981, better known as Contrail or Shadow-11, was one of the few pilots to help in disabling the Mega Ion Cannons of the Malevolence. He flew with Shadow Squadron throughout the Clone Wars and participated in the defense of the Federal District during the Battle of Coruscant. Finally, we have Flyby, who made it through the Balmora run only to be taken out by the Ion Spread and left behind while his squad mates completed their attack run. Obviously, there are more to the rest of Shadow Squadron, but considering these are the only names that are given when we first meet this daring unit, it's what I have to go on. Now that we know the members of Shadow Squadron, let's discuss some history. To go back to the beginning of this unit's organization, you have to trace it back to Jedi General Anakin Skywalker. If you remember during the Clone Wars episode Shadow of Malevolence, Anakin formed the Strike Force to specifically destroy the Separatist Ion superweapon. Of course, to say he created Shadow Squadron wouldn't be accurate as they appear to have flown previous missions in the past. We hear Matchstick comment on this after they are given their briefing, but for all it's worth we were introduced to them during this time and not previously. This episode all takes place in 22 BBY during what's known as the Malevolence Campaign. This 12-man Starfighter Bomber Squadron is originally tasked with the destruction of the bridge which would leave the droid army without their head clanker, General Grievous. However, the Battle of Kaliti Nebula is far more costly than Anakin or Shadow Squadron would have liked, and an improvised plan is made to take out the Malevolence's Mega Ion Cannons. We see the remainder of Shadow Squadron successfully damage the super weapon enough to prevent the destruction of a clone medical station, saving their wounded brothers. Although Shadow Squadron sustained heavy casualties, they would ultimately be victorious in crippling the CIS's biggest and baddest dreadnought. This was, of course, their biggest accomplishment, but what did they do following this pivotal battle? Well, you may be surprised to know they were in several more important battles one being the Battle of Kamino, where they defended the planet from Separatist invasion. Again being led by Anakin Skywalker, they engaged the CIS attack fleet above Kamino, damaging and weakening the integrity of the Separatist warships. The Republic forces would be successful in repelling the CIS, and Kamino would be safe from droid hands. Shadow Squadron also took part in the Battle of Kadavo. If you don't remember this one, it saw the liberation of the Taruta slaves as well as Obi-Wan Kenobi and Captain Rex who were taken by Zygerian slavers. After Commander Wolf and his wolf pack safely rescued everyone, the Kadavo slave processing facility was bombarded and fell to the depths. Nearing the end of the Clone Wars, the members of Shadow Squadron were flying modified Alpha-3 Nimbus class V-Wing starfighters which were equipped with hyperdrives and better shields. They used these new starfighters to help in the defense of Coruscant after General Grievous kidnapped Palpatine. Years of successful and daring missions left the pilots of Shadow Squadron as some of the most elite in the Republic Starfighter Corps, and as such they often flew escort duty for the Supreme Chancellor Palpatine's personal Theta class shuttle, which has to be the highest honor for a starfighter pilot to be placed under. Shadow Squadron is one of the Republic's best and most elite units, the only thing that can make them better would be a commander, such as Oddball. All jokes aside, I do love Shadow Squadron, as they were one of the first groups I got attached to in the beginning of the Clone Wars television series. And it was quite upsetting to see so many of them die so early on. 
But I really think that was the point of Season 1 of The Clone Wars, to establish that these faceless, white-armored soldiers were more than just identical copies of one another. They were unique. You see that in Shadow Squadron from Matchstick to Broadside to Contrail, Flyby, and Tag. Enough hearing from me, let me know your thoughts on this legendary Starfighter Squadron. Do you love them as much as I do? Do you have your own favorites within the squadron? Comment your thoughts down below. Feel free to subscribe to the channel, or even join if you want. Blast the like button to spread the reach of our nerdy content. Have an amazing day, and may the Force be with you.